we want to approximate square root of 3 using Newton's method. Now Newton's method involves a function and its derivative, and we don't have a function here. All we have is square root of 3. Remember, Newton's method gives us approximate solutions to roots of an equation. So if we want to approximate root 3, what equation has root 3 as a root or a solution? Well, it might not be obvious right off the bat, but certainly the equation x equals square root of 3, well, that's an equation with root 3 as a solution. And maybe if we just manipulate this, squaring both sides, root 3 squared is 3, and then subtracting 3, this is certainly an equation which has root 3 as a solution, and this is much easier to work with. We don't have any radicals, and this will be easy to take derivatives. So we'll define this function to be our f of x, and its derivative, just use the power rule here. The derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of minus 3 is 0. Now we can use Newton's method. I'll remind you Newton's method is x sub n plus 1 equals x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. Or in our case, x sub n plus 1 equals x sub n minus our function evaluated at x sub n. Our function is x squared minus 3 over the derivative, which is just 2x. So we have our Newton's method equation. We just need a starting place. We need an x sub 0. If you know anything about square root of 3, well, it's certainly less than the square root of 4, which is 2. It's certainly bigger than the square root of 1, which is 1. I think for simplicity's sake, let's just choose our starting point to be 1 and see how good of an approximation we can get. This means x1 will be x0, which is 1, minus our function evaluated at 1, 1 squared minus 3 over 2 times 1. If you crunch that number quickly, 1 squared is 1, minus 3 is negative 2, over 2 is negative 1, 1 minus minus 1 is 2. Okay, we're getting closer, but certainly 2 is not a good approximation for the square root of 3, so we'll just do this again. This is an iterative process, so we'll keep going. x sub 2 is x sub 1, we just found that to be 2, minus our function evaluated at 2, over the derivative evaluated at 2. And you can see very quickly that these problems will get computationally intense. I'll spare you the details here. This is 1.75. That's x sub 2. That's what we're going to plug in to find x sub 3. x sub 3 is 1.75 minus our function evaluated at 1.75 over the derivative at 1.75. And now almost certainly here you would have to use a calculator. I'll spare you the details. This is 1.7321. And here we're only looking to four decimal places, so I won't go any farther than that. Let's check one more time, because maybe if we went again, maybe these last four decimal places might change a little bit. If they stay the same, hey, that's going to be our best estimate. x sub 4, we do it again. This time it's x sub 3 the 1.7321 minus 1.7321 squared minus 3. That's our function evaluated at x sub 3 over 2 times 1.7321. That's our derivative evaluated there. And if you plug that in, guess what you get? The exact same thing. So we found this value. 1.7321. So this is the best Newton's method can do up to four decimal places since we're not getting a different result. In actual fact, square root of 3 does equal 1.732 and so on, so Newton's method works pretty well.